Good morning, VC. Um, vinyl community, for those that don't know. Um, yes. Uh, first of all, in the background, I am playing um, not the vinyl version, but the digital version of uh, Chikoria's new release, The Vigil. Um, I just barely started listening to it, and it sounds good. It sounds good. So I, I recommend checking out uh, Chikoria, uh, The Vigil. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> this is actually a redo of the video I did um, yesterday. Uh, I went yard sailing, and um, the the resulting video ended up being much longer than it should have, <laughs> than than the albums that I picked up warranted. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna try and keep this one down. I. I in the other one I did a little too much storytelling and not enough showing albums, so I'll try and keep this brief. But basically I, I went yard sailing yesterday. Uh, it was my first real attempt at yard sailing um, since I've been collecting vinyl. Um, I had limited success. Limited. Um, I ended up going... Uh, there's a guy around the corner that was having yard sale. He had, he had some uh, vinyl there. Originally I saw it um, before I was going to work, and I didn't have time to stop, so uh, I was hoping that he would have it again yesterday, and he did. Um, so I went there and, and checked out his stuff. Um, I gave him an offer th for the whole box, and he, he came close to my offer, but not quite close enough given, you know, um, what he had there. So I decided to, you know, go out and about and and let him stew and, and let me consider further, you know, how much I want to spend on those records. So, um, in the meantime, I, I tried to hit up other yard sales, and it ended up being very, uh, almost a waste of time. I discovered that Sundays are not the best day to do yard sailing. Um, I guess Saturday is the peak day, so. But anyway, um, I, I found one other, one other lady that um, had some records. Um, but she wanted way too much for them. Uh, I mean, it was basically stuff I would find at Goodwill, so... That was a no. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, then I went to a, a few others and no vinyl whatsoever. Uh, one that supposedly had vinyl, um, they were, they were gone. Uh, it was a moving sale, so I guess they had moved. <laughs> and they failed to take down the ad from Craigslist. But anyway, um, so uh, to, to make me feel better about my morning, I decided to stop at Sabres. Um, they don't always have the best selection there, but I figured I'd give it a shot and you know, just see what they have. Um, yeah, so I did find some, actually. Uh, the first one, this is, this is just one of those off-the-wall ones. I couldn't find any information on them. Um, Big Pig, and I believe the album is Bonk. Um, first of all, they look very 80s. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is from... I'm not seeing a copyright offhand. We'll assume it's the 80s. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, I was intrigued, though, by the, the instruments. It's basically percussion, harmonica, keyboards, drums. That's it. So yeah, it should sound interesting. And the uh, just as a reminder, the vinyl at Sabres, which is kind of like a, a vinyl... Uh, sorry, not a vinyl. A, a, a super thrift store here in Riverside. Um, they're 99 cents, so... All right, so here's another one. Uh, I, w I managed to preview a little bit of this on um, Mog, the Mog app, uh, Twilight Memories by the Three Sons. Just a nice classic sounding record. Now, these, uh, the next several, um, I'm, I'm hoping to beef up my classical selection because I really, really, really love classical music. Whether it's you know just symphonic or or ballet or um, um, opera, yes, I love it all. 
Um, and I have a, a decent amount, but I definitely need to beef it up though, because there's so much good um, classical music out there. That, and the nice thing about classical music is, more than any other genre of music, the vinyl tends to be in the best condition. <laughs> And I think that says a lot for people that enjoy classical music, such as myself. <laughs> Alright, so the first one, uh, Fritz Rainer um, performing Hayden, uh, Clock Symphony number 101 in D, and Symphony number 95 in C minor. And it looks like a lot of these, yeah. A lot of these came from the same the same family, John Palmer Sr. family. So uh, he took very good care of his records. These are in excellent condition. So here we have Ben Cleburne uh, doing Rachmaninoff Rhapsody on the theme of Paganini. Liszt, con Concerto Number no. Two, um, with the Phil Philadelphia Orchestra, um, uh, orchestra conducted. That's the word, conducted by Eugene Ormandy. <laughs> so there's that one. This one, I, I love the cover on this one. Uh, a nice piece of artwork there. Um, it's kind of funny because it's, it's pasted on there, but the, the, the sleeve has a, a nice texture to it. But this is Brahms Symphony No. 1, Boston Symphony Orchestra, um, conducted by Eric Liedensdorf. And down here it says the aristocrat of orchestras. So there's that. And this is uh, Brahms Symphony Number no. One. And then I discovered after I made the purchase that we have Brahms Symphony Number no. Two, also with a nice piece of artwork here. Um, this is Boston Symphony Orchestra, uh, conducted by Eric Leinsdorf. And um, yeah, so it's kind of nice to have um, a little miniature set there. This next one I'm pretty excited about. Um, first of all, it's it's um, music from ballets. And second of all, um, if you're on the uh, vinyl community on, on Facebook, uh, you may remember that I put out a request asking if anyone has uh, suggestions for a vinyl I could purchase. Um, for display purposes or art purposes, um, <clears throat> our sitting room where I have the turntable, um, there's like a blue theme in there. So we have a blue accent wall, um, and then I had put out a request for a record that first of all had blue in it, and second of all had a bird on it. And this one actually kind of meets that. Um, it's not in the best condition. You see there's, there's ring wear there. Um, so I'm still going to check out uh, several of the excellent suggestions you guys had uh, in the vinyl community. Um, but this is uh, the Great Stravinsky Ballets, The Firebird, Truka, and The Rite of Spring. And it's the Boston Symphony and Chicago Symphony, um, conducted by Saiji Ozawa. And I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. But anyway, so there's that. This has some text in there, information. Now, <laughs> this next one was a, a real surprise to find there, because I've, 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 I've been to um, Savers many times, and it tends to be most of the same stuff. They don't, they don't have a high turnover of, of um, vinyl there. But I was very pleased to see this because I already have this in my collection, but it's severely warped. It's a record from my childhood, uh, which I featured in a childhood vinyl uh, video on YouTube. And that is the Pac-Man album picture disc. And this one's in pretty good shape, so um, I'm very pleased about that. Uh, there's the other side. It just has some some really oh, there we go some really silly songs. Um, <clears throat> there's one of the better songs on it is called Turning Blue, because um, 
if you've ever played Pac-Man, you know the ghosts turn blue. And then they have another another good one. I'm not sure what it's called. Actually, I can find out. Um, here we go. Uh, turning blue. I want to say it's uh, the Gang of Ghosts Quarter. Um, they go go through and and say their names and. Um, my favorite is the the last one says I am Shadow. <laughs> oh, this was this was a classic in my youth. Um, I think it was one of the first bec records I bought. As as you know, um, I do see there's some scratches on it, but you know, it's to be expected. At least it's not warped. Um, but yeah, it was one of the first records I bought for myself. Um, I was quite young at the time. Um, but to this day, I, I've wanted to ha have a, a good copy of this. Um, this looks like a decent one. It does have scratches, but as long as it plays, I'll be happy. <laughs> um, I think those go for like 15 bucks on eBay. Um, I considered buying one on eBay, but you know. One area of music I'm hoping to beef up. I don't know if you can hear the music in the background. I have it pretty low. Hopefully you can hear it. Because just as I'm talking, it sounds really good. Again, it's uh, Chick Corea, the vigil. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, one area of music I am trying to beef up in my collection is um, Latin music. Um, <clears throat> There's not a specific reason, I guess. Um, it's not like I go out of my way to, to listen to Latin music. I do enjoy all kinds of world music, though. And on several records I've purchased, um, uh, Herb the Alpert comes to mind. Um, there's like a south of the border flare, and I just love it. I love it. Um, yeah, so I, I'd like to I'd like to explore more in, into those areas of of um, uh, you know Mexico, Central America, South America. Yeah, um, a lot of good music comes out of there. So, um, but with that said. I found this one. I'm not sure how like south of the, of the border this is. I, it's more of an a, an assumption on my part, but it's a con concerto for Mendez and other classical trumpet favorites by Rafael Mendez on trumpet. Um, now it does sound like like they have um, well some of them ha have a Spanish flair, such as the Bullfighter's Prayer. Um, I do not condone bullfighting, by the way. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I'm sure the, the song itself is good. And that's all that matters, you know. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited to add that to my collection. <clears throat> Another area, and these are the last two from Savers. Um, another area that I'm expanding into is uh, movie soundtracks, and I'm not really, I'm, I'm, I'm not so much interested in modern movie soundtracks, but more like classic, because one of my favorite uh, types of movies is old black and white movies, like, um, like 50s and earlier, uh, especially the 30s and 40s, um, yeah, some of my favorite movies are from back then, and you just movies these days just don't offer that anymore. Um, I better pick up the pace here, or we're gonna end up uh, with this video being as long as the last one. <laughs> but at least you have music in the background to entertain you, because I I, I I realize that when I do these vinyl finds videos and I don't have music playing in the background, it's probably really boring for you. <laughs> So I'm trying to change that, and that's one reason I re-recorded this one because, first of all, because of the length, and second of all, I didn't have mu I forgot to start music in the background. So I figured, well, um, I'll just redo it. All right. So uh, soundtracks. Um, we have the Sting, 
uh, featuring music uh, of Scott Joplin. Uh, he is synonymous with ragtime. Um, and then music conducted and adapted by Marvin Hamlish. Where's that? A classic movie with Robert Redford and Paul Newman. Now, one of... I don't watch... There was a time where I watched a lot of westerns. Um, not so much anymore because it, it it's to the point where it seems like it's all been done before and um, I still need to go back and watch a lot of the old uh, uh, classic westerns. I've seen a lot of them of course but um, <clears throat> I was excited to find this one, How the West Was Won. Um, uh, let's see, music by Alfred Newman and including songs sung by Debbie Reynolds. Um, yeah, the songs like Raise a Ruckus, um, He's Linus's Boy, yeah, and of course How the West Was Won. Yeah, so I think Westerns more than, more than other soundtracks really interest me, um, yeah, there's, there's just something about the the feel that they're going for and the the way they put the music together that it just it just has a classic feel to me so I've always I've always really enjoyed Western soundtracks so there's that all right so that was it for savers and again those were 99 cents each which is great um, these next ones are from I ended up going back to the yard sale guy and <clears throat> I I decided I was I was just first of all I had spent that money at <laughs> at Safers, and so I was no longer in the market to buy a whole box of records, uh, most of which were 12 inch singles, um, because apparently the guy used to be a DJ. So um, yeah, so <clears throat> I I decided to just go through and, and pick out some of my favorite ones. So. Um, here we have the first one, uh, Reggaeton Club Bangers, Volume 8, featuring uh, songs by Fat Joe, Big Pun, uh, Hector El Bambino, um, Mariah Carey, a really long name, Miri Ben Ari F. Zion E. Lennox, with Pitbull and Fat Man Scoop, and then Game featuring 50 Cent. Yeah, so there's that one. Uh, that one isn't so much a 12-inch single. Um, I think it has like six tracks on it. Um, this one, I love. I love Buster Rhymes. Um, there's a 12-inch single in there, and then uh, there's also another record in here, which I'm not sure was supposed to be in there, but it has eight tracks on it, so... That was a bonus, but I do, I do love uh, Buster Rhymes. There's that. I'm trying to go through these quickly because <laughs> I'm approaching the length of the previous video. All right, um, I do enjoy some Jamiroquai for those, you know, those kickback moments. Um, so it's a uh, little L with two different mixes by Boris Dulugosh. 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 <laughs> oh, just <you> see there. <laughs> this one I actually already listened to. I listened to it um, yesterday. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty good, actually. Um, it's it's a theme from the Planet of the Apes movie, um, which is by Danny Elfman, and then um, it includes the Paul Oakenfold mix, and there is also um, the main title, which sounds like it's basically just the song as it was in the movie, and then the main title deconstruction, which is a subtle. Um, uh, remix. That was very good. It's very, it's very dark and and kind of heavy. Not really what I think of when I think of Paul Oakenfold, but I'm I'm not completely educated on on um, electronic music. So, and then the last one I am very excited about this is, and this again was from the yard sale. I think I got all these from the yard sale for... He, he said four bucks, I said, yeah, I'll just give you five. 
uh, Shaft. Classic, classic, classic soundtrack. It's a little beat up, but eh, you know. All right, well that's it, and we're just over 20 minutes now. And on my way out here, I am going to turn up this music a little bit so you can enjoy some uh, Chick Corea on the way out. Well, um, thank you so much for watching, and I'm glad I was able to redo this video. It's going to be slightly like a minute shorter than, than the first version, but at least you have this great music that, uh, in the background. So, alright, well thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.